like the first verse. Is that correct? Verse 1 through 4. Okay. So let's look at verse 1 through 4. God said, 
in the beginning, if you disobey me, you're going to share the death. Man died then, but he didn't die physically. He died spiritually. And that's why there had to be a new birth. John said, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from who? Oh. Out of what? Yeah. Prepared for what? Right. A door for who? Oh. <laughs> now I want you to think about something. When we are willful, disobeying God, how are we preparing for the group?
when before the children of Israel started on the journey to the promised land, the first thing God told them is how to build the tabernacle so they could come and worship Him. Remember, every piece represented something. It was a tent that had to be taken down and put up. Everywhere they went, they had to put it up. It's to set up there. But when it was time to go, they were taken down. It was a tent. And this is what Christ came in the flesh as a tent set up for just a little while. God dwelled with us through the Holy Spirit. He said, when Christ left, he said, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to set another company. That company is the Holy Spirit. Well, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Through our faith in him. When we truly put our faith in him. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And we receive it by faith. In the holy city, we will live in the full measure of God's physical presence. We will no longer accept his presence by faith alone. We will truly be with him. You know, I don't know about nobody else. But the more I learn, the more I learn about God, the more I long to be with him. Did y'all understand no more pain? Did you understand no more suffering? Did you understand no more tears? Listen to what God has promised us. And the more I learn about it, the more I, I want to be with it. Now, this is the thing. We want to finish our course. Whatever that God has the work he has us to do, we should want to finish our course. And Paul said he kept the faith. That's what we have to do. We got to keep the faith. And this is, this is not a, a, a race. The Bible tells us they do it to the swift and the half fast the room. It's the one that endured to the end. We got to endure this to this temporary end. Because everything on this earth is temporary. That's including you and I. While on earth, we will enjoy some of the blessings of being children of God. We'll enjoy salvation. We're going to enjoy peace. We'll enjoy joy and will. We'll even enjoy all. But when the new Jerusalem arrives, we will fully be his people. And he will be our God. We will dwell together with him. And you know, every person has a choice. No matter who it is. We have a choice to want to be with him. Or we have a choice to want to be separate from him. What do you mean being separate, preacher? Being separate means doing your own thing. You know, do it the way you want. Matter of fact, even when we look at the word, the stuff I don't like, I don't see it that way. The things I don't want to do, our oh, God don't mean it like that. Yes, he means exactly what he said, exactly how he said it. If not, why would the truth tell you something different from the truth? Think about it. Jesus said, I am the truth. But we want him to tell us something that's not true. The Bible said the word became flesh. The written word, it went up on the cross and died for us. The living word, it gave it life for us. The word, why don't we accept his truth in our lives? Because a lot of times, you know, I think that we get so intelligent. Don't let us get a couple of degrees on our bill. And a few dollars. And a nice house. A nice car. Don't tell me God ain't blessing me. And I know I don't do it like that, but I know God blessing me. Look what I got. Jesus said, my king. It's not a new word. But he also said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, All these things be added unto you. Yeah, Lee, I'm happy about it too. Lee, what I ain't happy for it now, you know what I'm saying? Sound good. And that's how we 
we should have been, we should be anticipating word and loving it. Now look at verse 4. God, this should be encouraging to every believer. Every believer. And God shall what? How many tears do we shed? We lose a loved one. We shed tears. Something go wrong in our life. We shed tears. We are persecuted. We shed tears. Our friends and family come against us. We shed tears. He said, but I'm going to wipe every tear away from your eyes. He said, then what? Ain't going to be no more death. We don't have to worry about that. Every person in here, I don't care how young or old you are. You finna leave here. This place right here, cause it can't end in. It got to lay down. From dust you come, and dust you shall return. I believe when we're depositing the body into the ground, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, we return to that dust that we come from. Listen to what he, he said, no more death. Neither sorrow. My heart won't be heavy anymore. You know our heart get heavy when we really love the Lord about love the one that lost. Your heart is heavy. You love them so much and you can see that they're heading the wrong way, but they just won't listen. Your heart is heavy. You're worried about them more about them than they're worried about their sin. No crime, or neither shall there be any more pain. Lord, you mean to say? I won't wake up hurting anymore. I won't have to worry about my back hurt, my hip hurt, my knee hurt, my leg hurt, my head hurt. I mean, there's so much pain. And I'm going to tell you something. All that haven't felt it yet, and least you ain't felt it yet, Ty, you might ain't start feeling it yet, but I'm going to say what my mom used to tell me. Keep living, and you will find out this body deteriorates. And as it starts to deteriorate, pain set in. God is saying, this body got to lay down. But I got a new one for you. It said the former things are passed away. Former things are passed away. Even in a new life, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Stripping out what? The former thing. The old person. The old way, the old thoughts, the old action, the old doing, the old conversation, the old way of thinking, the old life is supposed to be passed away. Because guess what? If we don't start working on it down here, we have a promise right here that we won't receive. Any question or comment on those verses? The good.
taking off the old thing and putting on the new thing. God also calls himself the first and the last. Alpha is the first Greek alphabet. Omega is the last Greek alphabet. Genesis is the beginning of mankind. God said he spoke. That's all he did. He spoke. In other words, he is the beginning of everything. The Bible said everything that we see in the book of John was made by him, whether it's visible or whether it is invisible. It don't matter whether we see it or not, God is the one that made it. This is why he said, I'm the beginning. And guess what? He said, I am the end. I am Genesis and I am Revelation. Everything in between there is pointing you to me. Revelation is the end of everything. Genesis is the beginning of everything. Everything started with, with God. Everything will end with God. It's going to be his word that brought everything into existence. And it's going to be his word that destroyed everything that we see in existence. God's word is power. It is very power. He is the first in the land. Alpha and Omega, get in that name. He said, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He told a young lady at the way that she drink of him. She never thirst anymore. You see, what we got to have is a thirst for God's word. We got to have a hunger for God's word. Get what the church don't have. The Bible says in the last day, that there will be a great falling away. Falling away of who? The church, the people of God, falling away from God. What are we falling into? The world and its ways. Ah, oh, God know my heart. Mm, but, uh, you know, I read the Bible last night. I'm going to fish it today. That's recreation. I don't want to go to fish. Well, I talked to somebody about the law yesterday. I'm going to the ball game. He said, forsake not the assembly of the saints together. Oh, that ain't what you guys are talking about. Why well, he said, if you are a saint of God, he said that you should assemble with who other saints? Well, that, 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 that's just something that preacher talking about. God said it from the beginning. The Sabbath was set aside to be a holy day, a day of rest from the very beginning. He come through and told his people when he delivered them out of Egypt. The Sabbath was the day that they sit aside to worship and praise him. Come together. Guess what? We are so sophisticated today, I just don't see it that way. Mm. We talk about a pandemic. Yes, the pandemic out here. We're going to get to that in a minute, God, right here. We did see it. Y'all got I get there, man. I ain't gonna run ahead of myself. What are we worried about? A plague? But we'll get there in just a minute. Now, look at verse 7. We need to get there. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Hold on now. Overcoming what? Overcoming what else? The world. Overcoming what? The world way. Overcome what? The world way of doing things. The world has a system. And it has corrupted the whole world. A system of selfishness. A system of self centeredness A system of doing my own thing. A system of loving things more than God. A system to do things as I please. Why? Because I have placed myself to be God. And don't no one or nothing tell me what to do. Why not? Because I am a G-O-D small G. God. So who you think you're here to tell me what to do? We don't obey God. And we don't obey God's word. And we won't obey the man that God sent. And we say, well, he ain't nothing but a man. That was Christ. Well, when he came. Mm -hmm. What do you think the disciples were? When we look at the scripture, 
Paul was a man. John was a man. James was a man. Peter was a man. Adam was a man. Moses was a man. Ezekiel was a man. Jeremiah was a man. Do I need to just go through the Bible call off everybody's name? No, they were all men. They were all men. But our problem is, if God chose them, I'm just as equal as he is because I'm a man. <laughs> but you're not a chosen man. Well, who he think he is? I don't know if he chosen or not. God don't need your permission to choose somebody. When God chose Jeremiah, he didn't check with the people around there and say, hey, what y'all think? I'm going to check with a young man. He ain't got here, but I'm, I'm choosing Jeremiah. What y'all think about that? And somebody come up with a lot of I tell you, I, I motion that you go on and get Jeremiah. Then somebody else over here said, well, I second the motion. And everybody, let's vote on it so we can tell God what to do. Yeah. What is wrong with us? God created us. We didn't create God. We are subject to him. He is not subject to us. But this is what we think. God is my lucky charm. God, I'm going to go out here and I'll ask you a job over here. I'm going to go get this job. I want you to play on the gospel. But I ain't sending you over there. God, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to get this, this woman here. She sure looks good. I'm going to make her my wife. Did I tell you to go get her? I want you to bless our man. God, I'm going and I'm going to buy this car. Because, man, I've been wanting me a Mercedes. And I'm going to get this car. And that's what God wants you to get. He said that we should acknowledge him in all of our ways. And he said he'll direct our path. Well, Lord, you just ain't moving fast enough. Now, everybody up and got a new car but me. Guess what? Is it taking you and bringing you? I mean, think about it. If you ever travel, and as you travel, your car might not be the, the brand new car. Your car might have been the old car going on down through there, and you look on the side of the road. That a, that's a new bin inside the road. I wonder what's wrong with that bin. New, but you going on back. That's <laughs> why you see old cat like that in the old front. Is that a new cat like that? New, right on back. See, God said, I'm going to supply your needs. You need to get down here, I'm going to take it. You need to get back, I'm going to bring you back. God, I don't want to be in one of them things inside the room. Thank you, Lee. There ain't nobody here with me, Lee, say I'm with you. Now, 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 think about this. Why do you think the church is empty? Where is the hunger and the thirst of God's people? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, man, I'm glad y'all. I, I know we come to. I can, I, can, I, can watch, I can watch somebody preaching on the TV. You can watch somebody preaching on the TV. That's what God told you to do. Watch somebody preaching on the TV. This is how you get confused. I'm just going to eat everything out here on YouTube and Facebook. I ain't gonna search out the scripture. And then I'm gonna say, look at what they said. Why don't we look and see what he said? We have all kinds of teachers and preachers out there on the, on the media. God said, you better watch out for them false teaching. But it sounds better than me as I'm listening to. Guess what? When I watch them on the TV, like we were up when we were out, we want to make sure that the message is up on Sunday morning. We get up, say what I'm on. Make sure I'm on. Let the work power decide to turn the TV on. Baby, did you make the coffee? Let yeah. the message on. I'm not going to give me some coffee. Let me give me some coffee. Come back, take me a cup of sip. What? Did somebody just pass by the house? Is somebody out there? So get what? The message is playing, but well, where am I? Where my mind is. And guess what? Now, this is what we said then. When it go on, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't listen.
listen to what he said today, baby. Listen. 
You do understand this is the 21st chapter of Revelation. You got one behind you. God saying that, let me tell you one more time. Who ain't coming in? Now y'all need to get this. this is the he said, I'm, I'm through talking to you now. He said, but I'm going to tell you one more time. The fifth. Well, wait a minute, hold on, what fifth? I, I'm, I'm too fifth to hold my banner up when I'm in the world. I, I'm too fifth of what people are going to say about me if I, my conversation is about pride. I'm too fifth to allow people to see me living the world to see me living for the Lord. You see, but now on Sunday morning, you get me around folks just like me. I'm giving honor to God over the head of my life. I quote the scripture from the front to the back. But once I walk out and know, I left all of it in the church. And I pick it up when I get back to the church. The fearful and unbelieving Unbelieving of what? The truth. Do you believe God's word to be true? Do you believe God can do exactly what he said that he can do? Do you believe that? Because that's what we have to do. If you don't believe it, and believe me, the devil would attack any of us without belief. Now, now let me show you something about that belief thing. You see, this is how to be able to attack. Just because you asked for something or something going on and it didn't happen exactly when you asked, exactly the way you asked, the devil say he ain't here you. The devil say he ain't still you. The devil say he ain't gonna really do that. We have to keep the word of God in mind. And we think about old daddy. Oh, Daniel was a young man that followed the law with so many others that did. Oh, Daniel sent up a prayer. God answered the prayer the same day. But he sent the answer by Gabriel. Gabriel ran into a problem. Oh, Satan got between him and Daniel and went to war. The Bible said with three weeks, 21 days, Gabriel trying to get the answer to old Daniel. And can you imagine in Daniel's mind that a week went by? I didn't answer my prayer. I don't think God with me. I think God done left me. It, is it something wrong with me? You know what I mean? All kind of stuff. The second week went by, oh, God done left me. And the devil said, you might as well quit believing. Man, ain't no need you believe that's going to happen. It's not going to happen. Third week. God said, now, don't I? Michael comes down, I believe God said, what? Mm -hmm. Go down there and see about Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lucifer, hold him up down there. But I allowed it to happen this long because I wanted to see how Daniel's faith was going to be. Was he going to hold on or give up? Go down there now. Take care of that first. Michael come down. He released Gabriel. Gabriel went on. He took, when he got there with the house, he said, Daniel, God answered your prayer the same day. But I had a battle with you. You see, Satan always battled to keep us from receiving what God has for us. It is our faith that we have to stand on. No matter what it looks like, God will answer my prayer because he said he would. The abominable, the murder, and did you know what? I was going to leave them too alone and go on back. But a murder. We look at the murder as being the person who killed the flesh. We never look at the murder as being the one who kills him by the spirit. The murder of being someone who kills him by the character. Kills him by the being. Kills him by the dream. You a parent can kill a child as a child. He didn't kill that child physically, but you kill the child with the words that you said to him or her. I'm not talking about things I talk or heard. You see, if you, whatever you tell your child 
have a tendency sometimes that it'll go into their mind and get what they think. That's exactly what it is. We can kill a person the same way. How do you think if a person come to Christ and then you look around, oh, we got this devil himself and got it for you. Now, the devil in you. <laughs> we kill a person's spirit, they go back out and don't come back again. We kill their spirit the way that we treat them. And we're supposed to be Christians, I would say. This is why we have to watch what we say. We got God that told us. The Bible's not so funny to tell you it wouldn't come out of the man there. That defiled. It ain't what's going in. I don't eat no pork. I don't eat no this. He told you, bless that and go on. What goes into him, that ain't going to defile it. But what come out of it? And you know what? The worst thing any believer can do is go to talk to people when you got angry. We murder people without words. We will cuss them out and call them everything except what they is. Whether well, that if they're a child of God, that's what we should be called. But it's them going to call you everything except a child of God. Murderer. And it's a homeowner. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me, let me come back. I believe I had some the fear is a timid person or a cowardly person but also implies faithfulness. Why? Because I don't want to show who I am. Matter of fact, I'm such a coward when I get in the world. Man, I ain't finna say nothing about the God. Uh-uh. I'm timid. But guess what? I act like I'm about with him but I won't act like a warrior for him. We get in the world, our conversation change. I'm around cussing folk. Man, I lay it down. Then I get to church and I ain't like I'm just another good two shoe, make good two shoe. You know, turn my light out so that they'll accept me. If I'm around cussing folk, I got to call too because they got to they accept me. I can't be to my. Well, you know the law of sin. No, you don't, you don't, and matter of fact, you're right, you shouldn't be to my No, you know, the word of God said, see, I can stand on this wall because it's a thought. It is a thought. I ain't got to be no coward. God said, above us are those who have allowed themselves to be saturated with the sinfulness of their word. The sinfulness, the sinfulness of their word. I'm at, oh, I'm at church today. But tomorrow, I'm with the ball. I got to change the type of, my ears need to hear something different from the word. I, I got to put on something that's going to make a boot. What I call, hey, wood, boot. You know, hey, amen. Saying stuff that I, I shouldn't even be listening to. Because why? Because God said in the word, I should be guarding my ear. And then I expect to be a light to them. When I done changed my way of listening and changed my conversation, he said my conversation should be about them. Him. Him. Him, thank you. Should be about him. Homeowners. Homeowners are fornicators. Those who have sexual relations outside of marriage. Let me back up. Is that in y'all about? I know we got the Sunday school book, but it's in the, in the Bible. Yes, sir. This here is the book of Revelation that you're yes, reading. Sir. Okay, all right. Now, let me go on with it then. We'll we, we establish that it's God's word. In our culture, our culture today, it is common for unmarried couples to live together, but it is definitely against God's word. Why do you think you got so many people? I ain't finna get married. We gonna shack up. Sure. I got to live with him or her a while to see if I wanna get married. Well, you should be separated because what are you doing while y'all the one shacking up? You acting like you're married. That's what you acting like. And then children come. And then I decide, man, I'm tired of this. <laughs> 
And then, and, and you know, the first thing that'll come from a person's mind when they say I'm tired of it, I ain't married to nobody. But you don't act like you married for however long now. They ain't got nothing wrong because you got a child here. And you say, but she don't look like she used to look. Why? Because you done messed up with a child. That's your wife. You should still love love her no matter what. She has given everything for you, including going close to death. Because every time a woman have a child, she had been through. And she done been there because she loved you. A sorcerer and an idolater. This describes the worship of anything other than the true and living God. And most often, some aspects of God's creation from other human beings to supernatural the superstition to various material objects. Well, let me do it this way. I just got me a house, and I don't have time for God, so I got to pay for my house. Mm. God understands why I don't come to church, because mm. he knows I got to take care of my family in the house. God knows my heart, and your heart is far from me, because you should be bringing your family out of that house to God. Train them up in the way of the Lord. Now this is the thing. Sometimes maybe I looked at something that God had actually equipped me to receive right now. So I think if I put in more overtime, I can get this. My car. Man, I got to do hard. I got me a business now. God know my heart. In my heart, it went my car, my house. I got to pay for it. He said, I'm going to supply all your need. Material things, and we make those material things come before God. And we live in a society where that is a common thing. Why do you think people work seven days a week? Seven days. Why you work? I got to pay for my stuff. Why? Because I'd rather have this stuff than to have God. Okay, that now. That's what we're saying. When he done told you what you should be doing one of them days, but I'm taking, listen, God, I ain't got nothing to give you. I'm taking that to you. He said, well, what about studying what I ain't got time and time? Man, I've been working on, I, I tell you, I can't got time for study. Well, what about Sunday school? I can't go to Sunday school. I got to work. I can't go to worship. I got to work. I got to make something happen. Take care of my family. What am I telling God? I don't trust you to take care of me, Lord. What's that, man? Liars. Those who lie by their silence. You know what a liar is by your silence? A lie by your silence is when you say that I'm saved. But I get around unsaved folk. And then I like, I ain't saved. <clears throat> when I watch it, there's a lot being told somewhere. You laugh with the other folks or you laugh with these people. But it's a lot being told somewhere. <clears throat> you see, this is why whoever we are, we're supposed to be it seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Let me do it this way. Folks, they should just be a preacher on Sunday. Sure. You should have seen me Monday night. I, I shouldn't be telling. I don't call them real today, man. You know, the folks around right now, I don't want them to know what's up. You see, because I got to be down with them. Now I'm going to break it up, if anything. Why? Because when, when truth comes, the world says, oh, here you come, man. I got to go. Go, go, go. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. The law, let me run a test on the gentleman one day. <laughs> I went to talk to him about the law. He looked at it one. He said, man, he said, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off. He said, but I got to go. I supposed to have been over here a few minutes ago. He won, he loved football. And it's the same team that he loved. The law told me, he said, ask him about that team. And I turned around, I said, man, what about them so and so? Man, I'm telling He went into a whole gift. He talked about another 15 minutes. I just let him talk.
talk. I just sit back. As he was talking to me, the Lord was talking to me. He said, man, I thought he said he was I thought he said he had to go. He had to go when it came to the wood, but now when it comes to that team, man, he started telling me about how they going to make it to the playoff. He going to start telling me about the player, the watch. I don't know nothing about none of these people. Okay, yeah, man, show sure up. <laughs> now, what was he doing? He was giving me his Bible. Watch this. The problem with us here as believers, we accept their Bible from them, but they won't accept our Bible from us. Y'all get that? In other words, they won't accept the truth from God's word from us, but we will turn our life out to accept their word of way. Have we thought about that? So what do we do? We give up what we know is true to go along what we know is the lie. What did I say? Now what the lie? Now what else he said? Shall have their part in heaven? Oh wait a minute, hold on. Thank y'all, Lord. You know I ain't taking for the wood. I just want to see if they pay attention. In the lake? What kind of lake? Wait, 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 wait. You, you talking about lake? He said lake point. Not lake point. Oh, so wait a minute. We ain't gonna be going to fishing in this lake, huh? He said now, shall have their part in the lake with the burning, with fire, and brimstone, which is the second death. The second death. It says, there came up, there came up unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows full of the seven. Uh, last. Do y'all see this? Seven last, last plagues. And talk with me, saying, Come here, I will show thee the bride and the lamb of life. But wait a minute, hold on. Do y'all hear this? Before he showed the bride and the lamb white, in other words, before Jesus come to receive the church, his bride, he said that there is going to be the seven vile full of the seven last can y'all get this? The seven last plague. We talk about a pandemic. What we're seeing is plagues that is placed upon the world because of disobedience. How the world don't ever see what God looked like if the people of God look like the world. Just as soon as we get out there, man, let me play in here. Matter of fact, Y'all gonna hear that again today. This day, we wanna blend in with the world. Let me ask you something. If we blend in with the world, what are we doing for Christ? How Christ said, the Bible said, that if we do what with him? Lift him up. Lift him up. Not, not, not. He said we lift him up. I'm going to lift you up, son. When I get around other people that are lifting you up. But what about when he sent you out there by yourself in the world? How Christ going to ever draw all men unto him when the people go to lift him up with him?
See, pastor needs to look at himself. Everyone needs to examine his own self. God said in his word that if we would examine ourselves, he won't examine us. How do we examine ourselves? By the word of God. But guess what? We don't want to. Matter of fact, examine myself by the word. Man, I don't even want to hear the word. This is how we live today. But if there ain't a question to come in, because we done went over the death, but it'll be all right. Any question to come in?
according to his purposes, not our purposes, his purposes. We don't want to say happy birthday, first of all, to anyone that has a birthday this month and have an anniversary. Anyone that has an anniversary this month. And we will be prepared today for the Lord's self. And we're going to be talking a little bit about him today. Before we get started in the word, we're going to go into prayer. And while I'm praying, we're going to ask that you turn with us to the book of Mark. Gospel according to Mark. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come today, Lord, to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for waking us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for giving us help and strength because we didn't have to. Thank you, Lord, for starting us on our way. Lord, most of all, come on, thank you, give us life. Come on, now, we're going to be a little bit of 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 a Amen. 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 Before we get started, we're going to say the please. Our scripture today is coming from the book of Mark, the 15th chapter. We're going to look at verses 15 to 39. But after we do the pledge, you may be seated because I'm, we're not going to go through all of the scriptures today. We're going to pick say scriptures out for the word. And this will give you a hunger, hopefully, to make you want to go back and see what everything is said in here. Yes, sir. Our pledge. Are we ready? This is my Bible. My best instruction before the earth. It is the word of God. I was ready to show myself approved one to God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Because God said I will be it. And that self in the name of Jesus. God's word is always. Truth. There's no doubt about this. This word is always true. If I was going to use a subject this morning, my subject would be his death for our death. His death for our death. Let me say that one more time. Because he died in our place. So it's his death for our death. So we don't have to die. When we accept him and die to see, we don't have to worry about him. Die again. Now, last Sunday we talked in the book of Luke, and we saw that the Lord had foretold Peter of his denial of him. And the great warning of Satan's attack. Be prepared. We find that three times Jesus Christ prepared for the great agony that he had to face in the garden of God's city. The great trial of his total being to suffer, the crucifixion of his death. For all the world, that means the murder, whatever sinner that you can think of, God died for that sinner. For him facing the separation of the Father, because to take on the sin of all men, he had to be separated from the Father. And this is why he prayed three times in the Garden of Dustin. And while he was praying, he told his disciples also that they needed to pray. He was preparing to bear the unbelievable weight that no man can imagine. Jesus was about to carry a weight that no matter who we are, we can never understand not to, 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 to get a grasp of what God really went through for us. We look at what we go through for him. And we find excuses of we are too weak or it's too hard or I, I, I'm just not prepared. God said, I don't prepare. It's just that sometimes we got to not give in to those fire of God. The disciples could not carry the weight of stand or wait to pray for strength and to stand with him. Why? Because they were sleeping. Have you ever noticed that time we get around the word of God? It's always I'm getting sleepy now. You start to study the Word of God, and the Bible falls out of your hand. Now here it is, Jesus is getting ready to go on the cross. We can die. Well, each and every one of us, he's telling his disciples, 
you need to pray for strength because I'm going to get ready to leave you if they couldn't stay away to pray. So they failed. All of them failed. Jesus and ran away and healed. Why? Because they didn't have the strength to stay. You see, the Bible tells us that we have not, or we ask not. And we have to go before God and ask for what we don't have. And we don't have the strength to stand on our own. This is why he gave us the spirit in the first place. Peter being the leader, he did more than just run and hide. Peter went so far to deny Jesus. Not only did he deny him one time, he denied him three times. And we're going to look closer at his denial today. Judah, he was a pupil of him. He was a student. He was also a friend of Jesus. And he betrayed him with what is supposed to represent love, represent friendship, which was a kid. You know what? We look at today how people treat us. But if we're going to follow him, he said the same thing I went through. He said, you're going to have to go through it also. But you have to remember what he went through. We'll never be able to taste that. As I told you on last Sunday, we don't ever get Satan A game. Satan comes with us with a Z game or a Y game. You see, we never get to the A game because we fall in. But when he came to Jesus, tempted him for 40 days and 40 night, he had to bring his A game. Peter followed Jesus to fall off. You know, sometimes that's our problem. We want to follow Jesus, but we want to follow him at a different we don't want anybody to know that we are following him. When he was following Jesus, we found that he found himself that they were marching Jesus up to get him to go to trial for our sin. Every one of us, we noted that he sat down in the crowd. The crowd of who? The rejected of Jesus Christ. What did this crowd represent? The crowd represented the word. So here it is, Peter being the leader of the disciples. Is sitting down with the rejectors of the world. Now then, the first thing he did was when this young lady said that he was one of the first thing Jesus, I mean, uh, Peter did, he pretended that he didn't even know Jesus. How many of us, when we're in the world, we pretend that we don't know Jesus? We don't say anything about Jesus. We talk about it. Oh, Peter denied him three times. But you know, sometimes we need to look in the mirror. Because when I get out in the world, God is going to be showing the world what he looks like, I deny him. I start to act just like the world. I want to drink and cup with the world. I want to talk about what the ladies got on with the world. Instead of telling the world what God said to God, I turn the light out. So I'm just like Peter. I am denying Christ. I'm sitting with those that reject him. Because it's the world that rejects him. Peter should have been about Jesus. You see, it was somebody there sitting in that crowd didn't actually know who Jesus was. And God he up and walked with Jesus. He should have been telling somebody in the crowd. It could have been a soul that was saved, but instead of us telling the world about Jesus, we get with the world and with the crowd. And all of a sudden, we deny him by turning our light out. You see, we believe it. And that's what Peter was at that time. See, a weak believer, a weak believer, the crowd. They got Jesus. They take him to him the truck. And I don't want that to happen to me. What's that so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna follow him a fall. And I'm gonna sit out here with the world. And then I'm gonna pretend. I don't know nothing about that man. What's that I don't know who that means to be. So what about the second bit now? He began being his disciple. And a follower of Jesus, he started to fall far and farther away from the Lord. You see, this is the thing when we start to deny God and we start to hang out with the world and we put our light out so we can satisfy them. We don't even know it, but we start to drift. I think I, I'm not angry. See, I'm, I'm drifting, but I don't know that I'm drifting. If we just start to look at what we started at and then we start to look at where we at, God started to drift. And Peter started to drift further and further in the sea. And then there was the denial of English. I don't know, I don't know nothing about it. There was another king. Seen him at the fire sitting down there said, wait a minute. You want them to get a lead. Remember Jesus came from Galilee and the 
Galilee and the father he said, you know, if you want them Galilee, he didn't even talk about no man. No, you know. And the Bible said that not only did he deny, Peter went to know what we do when we get in the world, Peter starts us. I told you now. I know I'm looking like that man. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to make you understand. I don't know this man. So guess what? I'm going to start to cuss and act just like the people that I'm hanging around. What's that, man? This is what Mark said that he cursed and he spoke, denying any knowledge whatsoever about Jesus. How can I know Jesus and as good as he's been to me? Get around people and they are talking about him and I quit my life. Nah. We're supposed to be warriors for the Lord. We're soldiers in the army of the Lord. He was staying in the crowd. He stood around the rejecter of Jesus. You see, that's our problem sometimes. Remember the crowd of the the world. He kept staying out there with the world and not claiming to know anything about Jesus. We have to ask ourselves, I have to ask myself, when I'm in the world, how, Lord, am I representing you? Do I tell the unbeliever about you? Are you the one that break up the trap? <laughs> or are you the one joining in with the trap? Good. You see, I have found out something. When you go into the crowd and you start telling them about what God said to Lord, the crowd will break up. They'll start to have something else. To do. They'll find another conversation someplace else to ignore you. Oh, when we get in the world, do the world accept us, and we start to act just like you. Because every time we do that, we are denying you. Jesus. So you see, we can't look at Peter in such a way anymore. Peter was trying to be of the world. He wanted to be one of the crowd. See, and that's what we are sometimes. We want to be one in the world. And we want to be accepted by the crowd. But I'm here to tell you something today. You see, when we're accepted by the crowd, you're rejected by him. You see, he tells us in the word, we can't serve two God. We got to be one or no. Jesus was tried before the Sanhedrin court for the claim of being the Messiah. Jesus would try before the Sanhedrin court. And the thing about it is, these are the ones that call themselves the Pharisee, the Sadducee, the Strive, the chief priest. I need to make sure we get that part because the chief priest is the religious one that's supposed to be looking for Jesus. How many of us today, we know that and we say it all the time, look around us. Man, God is getting ready to come back up, but am I getting prepared to go back at people? Or am I trying to make sure that people to be accepted by the world so they don't talk about me? Well, if Jesus said he was the Son of God, that's exactly what he was. Then Jesus first tried before power. Then he went before Herod as he was dragged by the Sanhedrin court, by the Sanhedrin, from one court to another. Pilate and Herod was two enemies. But Pilate and Herod became friends because of their, both of them wanted to get rid of Jesus. But one thing I like about what happened, happened in Pilate. Pilate wanted to turn Jesus loose. It was his desire to turn Jesus loose. But guess what? He couldn't turn Jesus loose and please the crowd too. See, they became good friends at the second trial. With power. He said that he was found no fault in him. Paul said three times Paul wanted to release Jesus, but all of them wanted Barab to be released instead of Jesus to be crucified. I say sometimes, I believe that when they brought Barabbas up and stood beside Jesus being murdered, one that shouldn't have been turned to lose, I believe there was a conversation between Barabbas and Jesus. I believe Barabbas was worried about his life that day, but I believe Jesus, my 
America. You know, there are so many parameters today. We find you when we get into this 15th verse where we'll be starting at the day. It says, so God wanted to gratify the crowd, so he released the rest to them rather than delivering Jesus after they had scorned, scorned him to be crucified. We find that they took Jesus and they whipped him. They spit in his face. They poured hair out on his face. They took a crown of thorns and put on his head. The Bible tells us that as they pushed the thorns down on his head, we have to keep in mind how thorns ever got on the earth. You see, God put Adam in a garden. The God didn't have any thorns. You see, he could bless it and work it with no problem. But after he sinned, this was the thorns came, meaning that there was going to be some hard time. Jesus said, I'm coming because of the door. They were crying, throw on the head. They put the door down. They went all over his eyebrow. They stuck into his skin and blood. Oh, 
your family. And he said, we'll always give you a, an estate note. The Bible tells us that they put on a red cross on Jesus' shoulder. I want you to think about it as he tried to march up God. God. He'd been being beaten all night long. He hadn't eaten anything. He was all fed just like we are. His body got weak. The Bible tells us that he fell down on that cross. The Roman soldier, they had the heart to look over and pick somebody and say, get that cross. They looked over and saw a man by the name of Simon. In verse 21, Simon is Cyrene. Cyrene is a city that was in North Africa. Y'all need to get this. Because sometimes we look at ourselves. We call them like the orphans again. Because our skin is a different color. But don't you understand? It was a man from Africa. A man of God's skin. That picked up that cross. To help Jesus tell us. I guess that's why the song might have said. But Jesus said it.
Slide the tails up. They put Jesus up on that cross. Yes. And now it's like in the morning, the third hour. Mm -hmm. He stayed up there. Said by that ninth hour, slide the tails up there. They were the great doctors to come. That was 12 o'clock noon. And when the sun was at the highest point, and the Bible tells us a great darkness come upon the world. Why did this darkness come? Because in some way, God the Father, He took all of our sin, and in some way, He imputed it upon Jesus. And Jesus became sin for you and I. In the moment that Jesus had regretted that he didn't want to see it, the moment that he became sin, God the Father had to turn him back on his own son because sin separated him from the Father. And the Bible said that Jesus up on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, I'm not so back in that. Which means, my God, my God, why am I not mistaken? God said, the sin that I'm I'm pleading with you. You're paying the price, but it's a step for you. But I accept the payment, and that's why He raised him up. He raised him up in your life today. Yes, he raised him up in your heart. Yes, he raised him up in your feel. Yes, he raised him up in your word. Yes, he raised him up in your sickness, yes, and He'll never let you die. Yes. Once we die to sin. We don't ever have to worry about dying again. So the question we ask at the end of this, are you going to deny Jesus three times? Or will you be an example for Jesus?